So this will be a fun video for a variety of reasons. The primary reason is I get to fill up some more empty slots in my rack, which is always nice. But I am going to play with this Dell KVM 2162DS. Now luckily, I have the rail kit. So I can put this on rails rather than rack ears or having to sit it on a shelf. And I'm kind of curious to see how nice this rail kit's going to be. It basically installs like any other Dell rail kit out there. There we go. Oh, I don't want to screw that in quite yet. And this rail kit's kind of weird, because it's kind of a... Mm, I kind of, I, I don't know, it's probably not true, but it's kind of a combination of a static rail and a, and a ready rail. Because the part that you mount your KVM on does partially come out, although it looks like you will have to remove it completely to mount it on the KVM controller. So I guess they technically are static rails, that means. And installation, like most Dell rails, pretty straightforward, so that's nice. And from what I can tell, it doesn't look like there's a left or right, so that's also very nice. and attach the rails. This uh, black bit here is the front, so put the pins in the holes where the big part of the hole starts. And just slide it back. Super easy. And should be able to just push it right in. And that's the KVM mounted. That was really easy. And if I pull it out, there's a little blue touch points on each side of the rails and then after you push them in it'll come straight out. But we want to install this, not uninstall this, so yeah. One thing I already see that I don't like, which I might have to see if it's covered in the documentation, but the cables are going to come out the back of this and they're just going to be dangling loose. And my assumption is, is that they put this faceplate on here because they want to be facing the front of the rack. But I almost wonder... Let's see here. I wonder if you can install this backwards. And then maybe drape the cables over it. But I don't think that would really make much sense either. I'll leave it this way. Probably should have read the manual, but you know, where's the fun in that? <laughs> Now there's another piece that screws on the back, and since I didn't read the manual, I have no clue what it does. <laughs> oh boy. I should have Googled it. And we'll just uh, open up the rack here and try to squeeze everything around. Oh, so it's a little dark. So we'll have to work on that. There we go. Zoom out a little. And a little light. So this little back blanking plate screws onto the back side of the static rails. But I'm not 100% certain why, to be honest. There we go. Kind of trying to do this around the tripod makes it challenging. Not much space between the rack, the uh, back of my rack, and then the wall in this room. 
Although I could push the rack forward a little if I wanted to. Hmm. I don't think I'm aligned quite right. That's an interesting problem. Yeah, it's aligned. The threads might be buggered up. It keeps catching and slipping out. Let's see if I can shimmy, shimmy around my tripod here. <laughs> Also, wow, it's toasty on this side of the rack. Hmm, I'm doing something wrong. I can feel it wanting to engage. But then once I turn it more than once, after I start engaging it, it just pops out. There we go. Finally. So there's the back end. And I have all my main stuff already kind of plumbed in real nice. So I'm not going to uh, disconnect my existing KVM. So I think the plan is I want to try to get this server set up with KVM. My... Um, C6324 node server. Unfortunately, this node has died, and I haven't had time to figure out why. I just kind of said screw it. Also, I have an R730 under it that I need to do something with. I was intending on testing it, preparing it for sale, but kind of got distracted with projects. So I'm going to go grab some of the uh, KVM cables now, and I'll be back. Well, I decided to do some work off camera, and if you're a cable f management fanatic, <laughs> you might want to close your eyes. <laughs> oh man, it's about to get gnarly here. Um, I got some of the cables run. Obviously, we're not looking at cables right now, <laughs> but uh, I'm kind of questioning whether I should have mounted the uh, KVM on the back or not. <laughs> so... It doesn't look bad until you see the full picture. And I just got all these Cat 5e cables right now dangling around. I need to plug these into my SIP modules. And then I'm going to attach them to the server that I'm currently covering up. I was going to record myself plugging these cables in and hooking the KVM up, and then I realized my big dumb head was going to be in the way. <laughs> oh boy. Not sure why I'm plugging this into the dead node, but I don't know. And I'm not really going to worry at this video on having things plugged in correctly. Huh. Ah, there we are. Just notice I got some blinking lights in the back of the KVM. I'm not going to bother hooking this up correctly because I, at least as of this point of this video, don't intend to keep this KVM. Unless it does something extraordinary, there's really no reason for me to keep it. All my servers have iDRAC Enterprise licenses so I can remotely manage and control my servers. And I just generally, generally don't need physical access to them. Right. I also will need to give my C6320 power again. I left it unplugged for a while, hoping maybe to resolve its issues. 
It just kind of randomly died, and I don't know why, which sucks. Well, not not the whole server, but uh, node number one. It just, yeah, it no longer does anything. It powers on and just, it's like it's in a stuck in a standby state of some sort. I'm thinking I may need to pull the BIOS and see if there's some jumpers or something, or strip all the hardware out of it and see if there's some way to force it to come back to life. Now, the tricky part is finding the cords for that particular server. Alright, that's one of them. And there's the other one. The problem with this C6320 is it's 220 volt only, so I have to be mindful. There are a few things in this rack that will only run on 120 volt, so I have to be really careful with these uh, 240 volt PDUs I'm running. Well, now we got this disaster of a cable job going. Um, I got some blinky lights. Let's see if we can get an angle on that. The tripod's just a little too high. See if we can see what those lights are indicating. That's interesting. These power supplies are 240 volt capable. I'm not sure why the lights are blinking though. I did get my rack console hooked up, so I will be able to at least see if the KVM is powered on. And then I'll go from there. Hopefully I don't have to find a 120 volt outlet because that's going to require me to do some creative work. Also turn the flashlight off. So there's no front power button on this. So get my camera situated. So there's no way to tell if it's on which is kind of annoying. Let's see if I have enough room to pull my rack console out here. Oh boy. Not a lot of space. And currently I'm showing no signal and I don't know why. I'm going to fire up C6320. Which might get a little loud. So I got three nodes going now. This one of them's dead. And the keyboard doesn't appear to be working. So I'm not quite sure what's going on. So I think I'm going to pause and I'm going to do some tinkering. So, unfortunately a bad ending to this video. I shouldn't say I'm surprised. I guess really I'm just disappointed. It appears that this KVM is dead, which kind of explains why the place got rid of it. And this is currently, oops, plugged into the serial port. It's not booting or doing anything. I've power cycled it several times. I've let it sit for like 10 minutes, blinking. And I even double checked the uh, Avicent brand of KVM, since that's who made this KVM to see if maybe they had a different set of serial settings that they used, but basically it's your standard serial settings. Um, 9600 baud, eight data bits, one stop bit, no parity and no flow control. And unfortunately my guess is the firmware on this is shot. Somebody botched the firmware upgrade because the light it's kind of hard to see. The light is blinking a slow green. There we go. And that indicates that it's trying to boot in theory. If it was blinking the SOS pattern, that'd mean there was like a power supply related issue. But yeah, unfortunately, uh, can't win all the time. So 
this is dead. I'll end up removing it from the rack and I'm gonna sell the the rails and stuff individually. But yeah, not what I was hoping for, but um <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. At least you get to see my mess of cables I made that I have to clean up now. So anyways, thanks for watching.